as you know, the fascinating penis-themed trial of <laughs> Professor Donald Bartholomew Trump continued today. What you might not know is that it is not the only salacious high-level government official trial going on today, because right across the street in New York's famed public corruption district, New Jersey Democratic Senator Robert Menendez... Oh. My God, Menendez turned heel! <laughs> They're not booing, they're... Well, they were booing, yes, that's... <laughs> he faced his first day of reckoning. Federal prosecutors allege the former chair of the powerful Senate Foreign Relations Committee conspired with his wife, Nadine, to accept bribes from a trio of wealthy businessmen in exchange for political favors to help the governments of Qatar and Egypt. The powerful senator allegedly pressured the Department of Agriculture to help an associate maintain a monopoly on the importation of halal meat to the United States. I don't mean to get sentimental here, but in what other country in the world can a Cuban-American senator work hand-in-hand -hand with an Egyptian-born businessman to corner the halal meat market? <laughs> Living in America. But yes, Senator Menendez is accused of using his access and influence as a senator to illegally help a variety of shady governments and clients. But what evidence do we really have? Federal agents searched the Menendez home in June 2022, finding over $480,000 in cash. Two bags filled with $100,000 each. $100,000 worth of gold bars. Payments toward a mortgage. The Mercedes-Benz convertible. Furniture, exercise equipment, even an air purifier. Four boots stuffed with cash. Cash even found in the senator's embroidered congressional jacket. <laughs> Sacrilege! <laughs> in the lining of a congressional jacket, which, oddly enough, is reversible. <laughs> but the money is in his house and his jacket and his boots and his lining and his pockets, but none of it ties the money to Menendez or Egypt. The indictment says upon returning from one trip to Egypt, Menendez performed a web search for how much is one kilo of gold worth. <laughs> kids in your base 10 system of measurements and weights. <laughs> there could be a lot of reasonable, benign explanations <laughs> for why a senator's house would be stuffed with cash and gold bars, home heating insulation, perhaps, or something stupider. According to the New York Times, his lawyers now offering a new explanation as to why he had thousands of dollars in gold and in cash in his home. They say that the habit is rooted in traumatic family history. These are simply my emotional support gold bars. <laughs> whenever I am... Whenever I am not with them, I, I get anxious. Will respond to trauma in different ways. <laughs> now, when it comes to any trial, the first step, of course, and we've seen this play out endless times, finding an impartial jury. Defense attorneys have proposed asking prospective jurors if they have opinions about people from New Jersey. And do they think that because they are from New Jersey that they're more likely to break the law? <laughs> You mother <laughs> You bury one union leader at your football stadium <laughs> whilst running a human organ trafficking ring through some Secaucus rabbis, <laughs> and suddenly your whole state is a suspect. <laughs> you believe this tone? 
Huh? Don't you believe this? <laughs> Anti-New Jersey discrimination, that's what it is. <laughs> so obviously this is shaping up to be one of the more cartoonishly blatant corruption cases in some time. Jersey guy with gold bars stuffed in his jacket and a nice freezer of some halal meats. <laughs> that might speak to the general character of this United States senator. Menendez has denied any wrongdoing. According to court filings, his lawyers indicate he may try to blame his wife. <laughs> yes, it's those three magic words that every woman is dying to hear. It was her! <laughs> she did it! You know, I'd feel a lot worse for her if she wasn't also demonstrably a terrible person. But, perhaps, read up on it. Perhaps, I, I can't explain everything right now. I'll, I'll just say this. It's awful. But perhaps the dumbest thing about this entire not quite believable Real Housewives episode is how unnecessary it all is. You, sir, are an elected official in America's most respected legislative body. It's like a license to print money. <laughs> you don't need to break the law so cartoonishly when the legal corruption in the Senate is so f***ing lucrative. <laughs> Which brings us to our new segment, Senator Robert Menendez. How dumb is you? <laughs> as a New Jersey resident, as a constituent of yours, Senator Menendez, I have to ask with all due respect, how f***ing dumb is you? <laughs> Promising favors to foreign entities for a little chump change on the side? It's Bush League, when as a U.S. senator, you can enrich yourself in so many different, let's call them, legal ways. For instance, the stock market. Members of Congress's stock portfolios consistently beat the S&P 500. The average hedge fund was beating the market at 7%. The study found that the average U.S. senator was beating the stock market by 12%. The average U.S. senator. And if you think it's because the average U.S. senator is just so smart, this is the average U.S. senator. <laughs> Tommy Tuberville, an ex-football coach who doesn't know the three branches of government. <laughs> oh, but when it comes to the stock market, he sees the matrix. <laughs> How do they do it? Well, the secret is a shrewd understanding of the intricate interconnectivity of global markets. I'm kidding. They have inside information. California Congressman, Democrat named Alan Lowenthal, his wife sold shares of Boeing March 5th of 2020. The very next day, the committee on which he serves in the House released a damaging report on the Boeing 737 MAX. Oh, my God, what timing! <laughs> you see that? See, the rest of us only find out about Boeing's problems as we're being sucked out of the fuselage <laughs> mid-flight, just flying out over the wing. You're flying in the air over the wings. Sal! Sal! <laughs> I don't think they're good! <laughs> and it happens all the time. North Carolina Senator Richard Burr received a private briefing in 2020 about how bad the COVID pandemic was going to be for America, and he immediately sold off his stocks, saving himself a small fortune. Of course, he had a reasonable explanation. We wanted to ask you about those stock trades back in February of 2020. Um, you know, the SEC says that you had material, non-public information when you made those trades. I did look at what you put out. How is that not uh, insider trading? I'm so sorry, sir. I wanted to answer your question. If only there was a button that kept these elevator doors open. I don't know. 
By the way, uh, for those of you at home who don't have a gold-plated elevator, you can avoid these types of questions yourself just by pretending to take the stairs. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't really tell that. I'm going to take the elevator back up. I would do that bit more, but my knees hurt. As soon as, as, soon as I did the first one, because I didn't do it in rehearsal, I did it just now, and I was like, that's not a good idea. That's one of those where you're like, stop the taping and pull me back up. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, how does Congress get away with all this? Well, it may be because Congress is regulated by, let me check my notes, Congress! <laughs> And it's Congress that has refused to even hold a vote on the bills that have been proposed to ban members of Congress from trading stocks. Because not letting members of Congress inside or trade would be un-American. Just listen to one of the biggest beneficiaries of this stock windfall. Should members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress? No, I don't know to the second one. This is a free market and people we have a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. Ah, free market. Uh, excuse me, uh, Ms. Speaker, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm uh, uh, Martha Stewart from the Why the F*** Did I Go to Jail Times Picayune. <laughs> uh, why the F*** Did I Go to Jail? But here's the thing. In a free market, everyone has access to the same information. So unless you're going to put all of us on the committees, I don't get it. Now, to be fair, Congress does have rules against corruption. Members of Congress are not allowed to receive what might be viewed as enticements or bribes from lobbyists. No free concert tickets. They cannot accept uh, food, baked goods, sandwiches, etc. It just would not be proper. But in Congress's infinite wisdom, they do allow organizations to set up what are called leadership packs, where a congressperson can turn political donations from lobbyists into slush funds. A pharma lobbyist cannot buy a senator a panini and some NyQuil. But through the pack, they can pay for five-star hotels for Kirsten Gillibrand, luxury resorts for Ted Cruz, and even golf lessons for Rand Paul. It's all in uh, Ayn Rand's famous book, Atlas Putted. It's corruption. Really? That's my, that's my literate crowd. Ooh. I read that in college, excellent. <laughs> this is corruption in plain sight. We won't accept gifts, but if I want to have a luxury experience and you would like to pay for it and then join me on said experience where we can discuss issues important to you and your industry, who's the wiser, right? Senator Mike Lee of Utah? Shortly after this slopeside lunch for 22 friends, we decided to ask Senator Mike Lee just why he's doing this. Politicians raise funds, and this is what we do. I just want to be like this. I enjoy skiing. Enjoy Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. From now on, I am ending every uncomfortable conversation I ever have about anything with, I enjoy skiing. <laughs> Good day. But... But... Are luxury lobbying vacations still too much work, Senator Menendez? Because you could always write laws that directly benefit your side business. Like the way Senator Chuck Grassley netted $370,000 in farm subsidies or the $5.3 million that California rep Doug LaMalfa got for his gentleman farm. And by the way, for that much money, you better be growing actual f***ing gentlemen. <laughs> it's all legal and not a gold bar in sight. Or you can leverage your stature in government to get lucrative lobbying positions for your wife and your three kids, like Missouri Senator Roy Blunt. I, I don't even understand why that would be a question. Everybody's family does something. My father was a corporate lobbyist, <laughs> like his father and his father before him. Everybody's family does something. For instance, your daughter might receive unusually green-lighted Chinese patents. Or your son-in-law might receive billions in no-questions-asked Saudi investment. Or your son might get a lucrative seat on a corporate board. Let's hear Hunter explain that one away. If your last name wasn't Biden, do you think you would have been asked to be on the board of Burisma? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> Holy shit. 
out of all the senators and representatives who dodged and prevaricated and wouldn't answer any f***ing questions. You know you're in trouble when the most honest and transparent person in a story of government corruption is the ex-crackhead. <laughs> yeah. Now, you might... I don't know if I like Jon Stewart anymore. <laughs> now, you... now, you might think someone should step in and stop Congress from being able to enrich themselves, perhaps the Supreme Court. Well, it will come as no surprise that the same guys who think it's fine to accept a luxury Winnebago from a wealthy businessman have made it much harder to police corruption. In a decision called McDonald versus the United States, they said that the appearance of corruption is not nearly enough for it to be considered against the law. It must be... This very narrow quid pro quo idea, you know, I'm going to give you kind of like a cartoonish sack of money in exchange for an actual vote. Whilst twirling my handlebar mustache. <laughs> At every turn, our Congress and our courts have been given a choice. Be less corrupt or redefine what constitutes corruption and get on with your bad selves. <laughs> it's a game of reverse limbo. Having trouble getting under the bar of corruption we've set? Well, ooh, how about now? Robert Menendez's gold bars in exchange for favorable legislation is obviously cartoonishly corrupt. But for anyone out there who thinks the status quo of government patronage and influence is of an entirely different species than Menendez, how dumb is you? <laughs> <laughs>